Hello there. Hello there. Welcome back to Planet Mithril and we have the second instalment in our Star Wars Legion painting tutorials for you today. Our favourite character from the Star Wars films, books and extended universe, Obi-Wan Kenobi. General Obi-Wan Kenobi as he appeared in the Clone Wars in his armour doing his best to help bring the Republic to victory against the separatist threat that grows in the galaxy. This was a super fun model to paint. There's a lot of subtle detail on this model which you don't really quite recognise as there until you started painting it. And I appreciate that white is very daunting. It's not something we've ever been terribly great at, but we feel like by simplifying and dialing back the recipe and focusing more on our application rather than complex shading and blending here, we create a really effective look which can be easily replicated across any other clone and Republic unit and even stormtroopers to that ilk as well. We're using a lot of natural browns and natural tones to really try and lift the textures of the robes and the hair in particular and really capture the essence of Obi-Wan Kenobi as he's seen in the films and TV shows. So as always we make sure our model is prepped accordingly and we undercoated our Kenobi with Mechanica Standard Grey. Now we're going to be using Citadel paints for the face as we find they give the best look overall once finished and then we'll be switching over to the Scale 75 matte paints for the majority of the rest of the model. But we hope you guys enjoyed today's offering. Brush is ready everybody, let's get painting. Base colours. We're going to start by using Citadel Bugman's Glow and apply this as a base coat all over Kenobi's face and around his lips and neck. Now we can use a mix of Dubai Brown and Arbuckle's Brown and apply this as a base coat to the hair and the beard and moustache. Now, using a 3 to 1 ratio mix of Walnut and Iroko, apply a base coat to all the Jedi robes. You might want to apply this in a few thin down coats to get a nice smooth finish across all the robe areas. Now we're going to use a 50-50 mix of graphite and white and apply a nice thorough solid base coat all the clone armor. Now this will definitely need multiple applications and try and keep your paint nice and thin here so we get a nice smooth crisp finish once all the paint has dried on the armor. Remember you can always add more paint you can't take it away once it's dried. And don't worry too much about going in all the recess and gaps here we're going to manually shade those later on down the line. We're going to very carefully base cut the under robes and the trousers with a mix of brown leather and black. Finally, we painted Kenobi's gloves with petroleum grey. At this stage as well we also went round all the clone armour now and repainted in the joins of the armour plating and all the grooves and gaps in the armour. Just to provide an initial shade and separate out the armour segments before we get to the next layering and highlighting stages. Flesh and facial details. We're going to be working up through the progression of Cadian Flesh Shade and Kislev Flesh with right Clem Flesh Shade Jades for the bulk of the skin and flesh work on Kenobi. To start off with, we're going to apply a layer over all the facial details now with a 50-50 mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone. 
leaving the bug ones glow showing around the eyes and around the deepest recesses. We're now going to apply a slightly thinned down wash of Reichlin Flesh Shade just to add some more toning to the facial area. Once this was dry and you're happy with how your shades are looking, we're going to apply another layer now, increasing the amount of Cadian Flesh Tone to an approximate 3 to 1 ratio split between that and the Bugman's Glow. And continue layering up the face, leaving the right and flesh shade showing in the deepest recesses to create a natural flow of movement across his face. We're going to continue adding Cadian Flesh Tone in small increments, building up the layers nice and gradually until you're reaching the penultimate highlight stage using pure Cadian Flesh Tone. I'm going to start applying highlights now with a mix of Kislev Flesh and Cadian Flesh Tone in an approximate 2 to 1 ratio split in favour of the Cadian Flesh Tone. Just looking at pushing that facial detail a little bit more and creating a bit more depth and definition across his facial features. For the final highlight stage now we opted to add a little bit of Pallid Witch Flesh and just focus on picking out the most pronounced areas of facial detail, focusing mainly on the brow, the spot on the hair forehead, the bridge of the nose, tips of the ears, and those super well pronounced cheekbones. Hello there indeed! You can also then apply a very thin down glaze of Riken Flesh Shade just to help tile these layers and highlights together. The recesses of the eyes were picked out with Abaddon Black. And then finished off with two dots of Pallid Witch Flesh either side just to finish creating the eyes. Hair and beard. We're going to be using different variations of the base coat mix to shade and layering up using black earth brown and pale skin to try and give Kenobi that really nice authentic sandy texture and look that he has to his hair from the films. To start off with, however, we're going to apply manual shade to all the hair now with pure Arbuckles Brown. Once the manual shade is dry, we're going to start layering up now by applying a layer of pure Dubai Brown, leaving the manual shade showing in the recesses and blocking out the larger areas of hair across his head. As you can see, we're just picking out the large areas of hair and creating an initial sense of depth and shadow between the lighter and darker areas. Continue layering up the hair and beard now with mixes of Dubai Brown with Black Art Brown added in in small increments. And each stage looking at pushing the definition of the hair further by keeping our highlights and layers tighter and thinner with each incremental stage. By the time you reach the final layering stage, your mix should be an approximate split of 50-50% Dubai Brown and Black Earth Brown. For the final highlights and to really hammer home that authentic sandy look we want for Kenobi's hair, we started adding in pale skin to the previous Black Earth Brown Dubai Brown mix. And applying this as a highlight across the most pronounced areas of hair. You can continue adding pale skin in as many increments as you want, it's all personal preference at this stage. By the time we finished highlighting, our mix contained an approximate 2 to 1 ratioed split of pale skin to the previous Black Earth Brown Dubai mix. And at this stage we're focusing on just the tips and the most pronounced areas of hair which are being pushed up by the shape of Kenobi's head. Jedi Robes Jedi robes have a very unique hue to them, so you want to bring them up really nice and authentically without desaturating and overblowing the hues and tones for the actual robes themselves. To start off with, we're going to apply a manual shade to the robes now by adding an approximate 25% Gobi Brown to the previous Walnut and Iroko base coat mix. The detail on the robes is somewhat shallow, so we're going to have to push this a little bit further with the following shade in just a moment. 
Now we're going to add between 10 and 20% red leather to the previous shade mix and apply this as a second shade just to push the depth and tone of the shadow we're trying to create a little bit further. And we're going to start very carefully layering up by adding in far brown to the previous walnut and Iroko base coat mix. We're looking at applying our initial blocking layer in an approximate two to one split in favor of the original base coat mix. The Thra Brown will bring up the tones of the browns we use for the base coat really well. It's a really nice natural progression, which we'll be building on for the later layering and highlighting stages. We want to continue adding Thra Brown in the mix until our ratio has flipped over to a two to one mix in favor of the Thra Brown itself over and above the Walnut and Oroco base coat mix. And continue just accentuating our blocking layers and finding a little bit more texture and definition between the darker folds of material and the lighter, more pronounced folds of the Jedi ropes. Working your way up to a penultimate highlight now with pure Thra Brown. As you can see, the Thra Brown does most of the work for us and doesn't desaturate the tone of the Jello robes. It keeps their characteristic warmth, their natural beiginess from the films, and is also a really nice natural progression from the darker base coat we used up to the lighter hues we're using now. Finally, using a 50-50 mix of Thra Brown and White Sands, apply a fine edge highlight just to the most upper and most pronounced areas and folds of all the Jedi robes. Under robes. Again, we're going to be using quite a simple paint scheme to finish off the trousers and under robes. To start off with, we're going to let start layering up the under robes by adding in Bosch chestnut to the previous brown leather and black mix. Now we're going to start adding sandalwood and apply this as a quick highlight to all the under robes and trouser areas. Increasing the amount of sandalwood in the mix to an approximate 50-50 split between sandalwood and the previous layer stage for the final highlight stage. Clone armor. What's everyone's biggest bugbear? Painting white, I don't doubt. I know I've struggled with it in the past. Well, hopefully using these three paints, we're gonna show you how you can create a really simple, effective way to paint a solid white clone armor here. To start off with, we applied effectively a wash to all the clone armor now with petroleum gray. Now we thin this down with water ourselves, but if you've got a medium or paint thinner you'd rather use, then that'll work just as well. We're looking at just maneuvering this into the grooves that we painted in with petroleum gray earlier on and just turning down the armor that little bit. Now for the super painstaking part. Remember that base layer we spent ages applying earlier on? Well, we're gonna reapply that now as a 50-50 mix of graphite and white, and we're gonna carefully pick out all the panels and all the individual areas and segments of clone armor. Again, applying this in a few thin down layers to get a smooth finish. 
The texture of the armor now we've applied that petroleum wash means that you shouldn't need too many coats of this to get a nice smooth finish. But it is important that it's clean, crisp and solid once we're done because any blemishes will look unsightly and unnatural once we're finished. And we're going to keep working up, blocking out the individual segmentations of armor now by increasing the amount of white. Now we're looking at an approximate 80 to 90% split. We don't want too much graphite in the mix when we get to the penultimate layer stages. If, like we have, you've gone over any of the recessed shades, you can repaint them in at this stage now using petroleum grey. As we want the final highlight stage to be nice and crisp and super clean. So any touch-ups with the petroleum grey need to be done at this stage. Once you're happy with how your clone armour is looking, now the super time-consuming part comes where we apply an extreme edge highlight so all the clone armor now with pure white. And we want to maintain a super fine tip to our brush here because we want this to be as crisp and as clean as we can. Keeping our brush strokes as controlled as we possibly can to make sure our application of this stage is as smooth and crisp and clean as it can be. gloves. Ironically, it's quite a complex mix of paints for the gloves compared to other areas like the robes in the clone armour. But to start off with, we're going to apply a shade to the neck cloth and the gloves using Necro Grey. Now we're going to layer over all the grey areas with a 50-50 mix of petroleum grey and resurrection flesh, leaving the shade showing in the recesses between the fingers and around the crease in the neckline. We'll start highlighting now by adding some NACAR to the previous layering mix. This is the approximate 2 to 1 ratioed mix. Pushing the concentration of NACAR in the mix to an approximate 2 to 1 split in favour of the NACAR for the penultimate highlight stage. In this stage we're looking at just picking out the knuckle joints and tips of the fingers and creating definition across his hands. Any straps now around the clone armour were painted in with petroleum grey. The straps were highlighted quickly with rainy grey. And a final edge highlight applied with miskatonic grey. Belt. We're going to be using a progression through some richer browns and leathers now for the belt with some metallic details to finish off the riveting on the belt itself. To start off with, 
we're going to base coat the belt with a mix of Bosch chestnut and black. The belt was shaded now by increasing the amount of black in the mix and applying this as a manual shade around the pouches and to create an aged look to the leather. And we're going to layer over the belt by adding some orange leather to the previous Bosch chestnut and black base coat mix, leaving the manual shade showing in the recesses to create a sense of depth and shadow. For the first highlight now, we started adding in peanut butter to bring the belt up a little bit more starkly, a little bit more quickly, and to give it a little bit more of an aged look to the upper, more pronounced areas. And finally, adding Mojave White for the final edge highlight, just to pick out the main details on the belt itself now. Then carefully picked out any rivets, any buckles, and any metallic details with thrash metal. Lightsaber. We're not going to be creating too much definition across the hilt because there's not an awful lot of detail there that's not covered by his hand. However, the blade requires a little bit more care and attention to it. But to start off with, we're going to be picking out the metal areas on the hilt using black metal. This is mainly the pommel and the emitter of this particular saber. The grey areas and the bulk areas of the hilt now were picked out with Eclipse Grey. And finally, the bronze details were base coated very carefully now with old copper. The silvers now were given a quick highlight using speed metal. And then the coppers were picked out with peridot alchemy just to make them pop a little bit more. Now for the fun part, the blade. The blade itself was picked out with a solid coat of sky blue. Again, as we have done with the lighter areas of this model already, apply then a few thin coats to get a nice solid finish to the blade we can work off for the following highlighting stages. We then applied a mix of sky blue with some white to start building up the heat and intensity of the center of the blade. And we applied this mainly to the upper area of the blade, as this is where our source of light is going to be coming from. Layering up now by continuing to add white in small increments. By the time we get to the final layer stage, your mix should contain no more than 50% white to the sky blue. By the time you reach the final highlight, your mix should contain no more than three parts white to one part sky blue. We're not going to be highlighting up to a pure white as we feel this would desaturate and overblow the tones of the blue we've used to create the blade thus far. Republic Freehand. This is a purely optional stage. Uh, this is by no means necessary if you feel you're happy with how Kenobi looks. But to start off with, we mapped out the freehand design for the Republic symbol on his shoulder pad using Tinderloss Red. Make sure you've got a reference picture for this if you're struggling, as it really helps to know how the design works and how you can apply it most effectively to the shoulder pad. 
We then applied a layer using Antares Red just to make it pop a little bit more against the white. Looking at leaving a little bit of the Tinderloss Red just around the outside to give it a slight separation and avoid it blending in too much with the white of the clone armour. And finally, apply a quick highlight with Beherit Red just to make it pop a little bit more. And there we have it. Finished General Obi-Wan Kenobi, leader of the 212th Battalion, ready to help lead his Republic brethren to victory in the Clone Wars. This particular model most certainly has the high ground in our opinion. We based our Kenobi with the Citadel technical paints, sterling mud, and then once dry it, we painted it up with dry bark, Gawthor brand, and pallid witch flesh and decorated accordingly. You can base your Kenobi however else you wish. If you're after some inspiration, we have some basing tutorials elsewhere on the YouTube channel in the five minute base section.